Hey guys, MJ675 here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the 75221 Imperial Landing Craft set. The set retails for $90 in the US and comes with 636 pieces, so without further ado, let's get into this. So, here is the box. As you can see, it has box art and stuff on it, like most sets do. Here is the top of the box, in which you can see some figures and, you know, other languages and stuff. Now, the bottom of the box, which is nothing really out of the ordinary. The side of the box, which again, nothing unusual, and then the other side of the box, which has the picture here. So, pretty neat. Now we'll take a look at the back of the box, in which you can see some of the features of the set, including the opening cockpit, the opening sides, and the sort of walking ramp, as well as the stud shooters. So, yeah, and just all the features and, you know, just some other positions of the set. So, overall, um, I don't really have any problems with this box. The box is taped, so... That should be easy enough to get open. So, now that we have talked about the box here, I'm going to open the box. Included in the set is the box, the instructions, and sticker sheet, which come in this bag, as well as five numbered bags of pieces. Alright, so now we'll take a look at the instructions and sticker sheet. As you can see right here, they come in a sealed bag like this. Um, there's no cardboard backing or anything on them to keep them straight. They just come sealed in a bag like so, which I will now open soon. We'll see. Uh, this, this I believe this is actually a different packing than some of the ones I have opened recently. This, is, this was much easier for me to open, and you know that's how someone who every time I've opened one of these on camera has had horrible luck and bent the instructions before. So. Now that we have unboxed that, we'll take a look at these, starting off with the sticker sheet. So, here's the sticker sheet. It's, there's not really a whole lot to it. A lot of these stickers are just white on a white sticker sheet. Um, there are three unique stickers, which can be seen here. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total stickers. So, not bad for a set of this size, and we will see how those go. But as far as the quality goes, nothing really out of the ordinary with these stickers right here. So that is it for the sticker sheet. Now we'll take a look at the instruction manual. And this is the pretty much the largest size of instructions for normal sets. And if we are to open this up, you can see it talks about the normal stuff with the brick separator and then the different bags and how those all go together. And then you get into the build and if we are to go all the way to the end to see what's going on over there. You have some advertisements for some other LEGO Star Wars sets and minifigures right here, which is not really unusual for this wave. And then just right here you have more advertisements for solo movie sets, and then you have a LEGO Life advertisement, followed by the set's part inventory, so nothing really unusual here. Product feedback survey on the back. Overall, I don't have any problems with either of these two things, and they do just kind of hold up to the normal standards that we've come to expect. So, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing really bad though either. So, now that we have taken a look at these, I'm going to build the set. I gotta stop the build here. This, this is just beautiful. Oh my goodness. This, this is just wonderful. Just, just take a look at this. This is the actual helmet the way it's supposed to be, and this is this one. This, this is something that is very amazing that I will probably cherish for very long after this video, whether or not I end up liking this set or not. So, let's, let's continue on with the speed build now.
right, so here are the extra pieces from this set. The brick separator isn't really an extra piece, but I just threw it on there because it doesn't go on the build. And four of these studs are supposed to be for the stud shooters, and one of them is actually an extra. Um, my favorites among these are this pin bushing, I guess you would refer to it, and light gray, light saber hilt, and that's pretty much it. Um, all these are pretty normal pieces, though. As far as the building experience went, it was quite enjoyable, and there's not really much more to say about it than that. I did enjoy building this set, so... Now that we have taken a look at the extra pieces, I'm going to show you guys the figures from this set. Alright, so here are the figures that are included in the set. Going from left to right, we have a Sand Trooper, which mine is misprinted a little bit as you can probably tell. We have a Sand Trooper squad leader right here. We have an Imperial Shuttle Pilot. We have Obi-Wan Kenobi, and then we have R2-D2 on the end. So, just first I will just rotate all these figures so that you can see all of them from all the different angles. And I guess we'll start with R2-D2 because R2-D2 over here is really simple. It's just the same R2-D2 that we've been getting. So nothing really special about it. No back printing or anything on R2-D2. You know, it's just the same print that we've been getting for pretty much the last year at least, if not more. So nothing really in new or interesting about that. But now we'll talk about these other figures here. So just take a look at the helmets and just different hat pieces. Um, obviously this one's my favorite right here, but these are all pretty decent. I mean, the gray hair is just kind of the same gray hair piece that we've had for a long time, but that's nothing really to complain about. It does fit Obi-Wan's figure quite well to have that hair piece, so now I will quickly remove these so that we can see the different faces, and as you can see, angry clone for both of the Stormtrooper faces. Um, this is also a pretty common face for the shuttle pilot, and then Obi-Wan really has the only really new or, or more interesting face. I don't know if this face is actually new for this set or not, but no alternate faces in this set at all, which, you know, kind of disappointing, but oh well. Um, then, just taking a look at the fronts of the torsos, here you can see that they all of the figures do have leg printing, which is pretty neat, and I do like all of their leg printing, especially the Sand Troopers, I think they look really good with that leg printing right there. And also they do all have torso printing, no arm printing, again, I really like the sand troopers, but all of the figures are quite fine. And then we'll just quickly take a look at the backs once again. Um, the backs are covered up by these sort of moisturizers right here, I guess, or back packs or whatever you like to refer to them as, I don't know the proper name for them off the top of my head, unfortunately. But these are covering up some back printing and they also do have some shoulder pauldrons, the orange one is for the squad leader and the other one is just for your regular sand troopers so that is pretty much that um, if I were to remove all of these things I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the head off oh, dropped some of that but you can still see the other one right there and I have the piece again so I'll just put it back <laughs> it's, it, it's fine and then just to remove all of these other things you can the back printing. I'm only going to remove it on this one here, but it is the same on both because the torso pieces are the same, and you can just kind of see it's the standard Stormtrooper one with a bit of sand and stuff in there as well. So that is pretty much it for the figures. Um, I'll just reassemble the Stormtroopers or Sand Troopers, and we'll kind of go back around in the front. I mean, overall there's nothing really unusual about all these figures. Um, looking at it from just the set's perspective, obviously from this selection of figures, um, this one's a bit unusual, but overall, not really, not really anything insane to talk about, um, if you're just looking at these, you know, pretending that th these are the same helmet, but still, I really do like the selection of figures in this set. I think it could be improved, which we'll talk about a bit later in this video, but overall, I think that they have a decent selection of figures here. So, now that we've taken a look at the figures, let's take a look at the actual Imperial Landing Craft that is included in this set. Alright, so now we'll take a look at the Imperial Landing Craft. Here is the ship, as you can see. I will just rotate it just a little bit so that you guys can see all the major angles, and then... We will get on with the overview and just kind of looking at the set, seeing what it can do, and all that fun stuff. So, now that I have done all that, let's start up here in the front, which is the cockpit area. And as you can see right here, if you are to tilt this, it will just open up like so. And this is your cockpit right here. So, you have a seat right here, and it has a bracket sort of piece that you can 
sit your guy down right here. Which, you know, it that's nice and all. But other than that, on this, I think that this part right here in the back looks pretty terrible. And if I am to zoom in there, you'll, you'll kind of see what I mean. You can see, like, some of the dark red and stuff. It's kind of going on in there, which, you know, isn't bad, but the whole thing just kind of looks a bit unfinished. It doesn't really look very smooth like a lot of the rest of the set does, which isn't a big deal. But, you know, it's still something that I will complain about. And if you are looking for a control panel, um, there's one right up here, which is on the underside of the sort of cockpit right here. You can kind of see it's one of those one by 2 cheese slopes. If I'm to tilt that down, um, you can't really see it very well. But if I am to sort of tilt up, you'll be able to see it just a little bit like that. So there you go. So now that your pilot is in there, um, he can pilot the ship. Um, there's also stud shooters on either side of this, which as you can as you can see right here, um, they work just like stud shooters do. You just do that and shoot the stud out. It does come with four extra studs in this set in case you lose some, but I just wouldn't recommend firing them just so you don't lose any of them anyway. Um, moving back here, um, we have this this giant fin, which is up here, which, you know, it, it's alright. It doesn't really do anything super special for the set, but it is right here, and it does look pretty nice, except for a few things, and this is something that I noticed in quite a few areas of this set, is that there are some exposed colors if you look just a bit into it. Um, like, right up here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's actually, if I were to remove this plate right here, you can see that um, there's some red and some, and some tan right there, and those kind of bleed through, as well as some of the blue that's really just on the inside there, and also some of the some of the dark red kind of comes through right here, and some of the brown comes through right there, and some yellow as well, which I'm not really big fans of, so overall I'm not very happy with that, but that fin is there. There's a sticker on each side, so there you go. So also under the ship, before we get into this middle compartment, there is landing gear. This is not retractable, it is adjustable though, which, you know, that's neat. And it doesn't look too bad, so I'm, I'm kind of fine with it not being retractable. And I didn't really see with the design and the space that was allowed for the landing gear how they would really even go about doing that. As you can see, it's just these pieces stuck on there. That's all that they have for landing gear, which, you know, I, I totally get. So now we will go on to, into this compartment right here. And just opening these things up, it comes in three sections and they open up like so. So this is really your inside of your cabin right here. This is all the space that you have for troops and other things, and it is the same on both sides, so we'll just take a look at this side. So as you can see right here, um, there are two kind of little cabin things right there, and then there's this thing right here. And what this does is if I'm to really quickly close all this back up, if you pull this down like so, you will notice that there is, well, you can't see it very old, there's this little thing which peeks out, and you can pull this out, and use it as sort of a loading ramp. So if you have, you know, your sand troopers, you can kind of have them walking up, walking on in. And unfortunately, if you do try to put it without put troopers on it without holding it, it will get pushed back into the landing craft, which is kind of unfortunate. Like if I were to do this right now, you can't really see it very well if I don't tilt the ship. But right here, here we go. We got a guy I'm going to put on here and it kind of just pushes in so unfortunately you do have to hold it a little bit it's not the most stable thing but once you get them on there it actually does look pretty good even though the scales don't quite line up for this but I still think it looks good the one thing that I don't think looks good about it is just this transparent red stud and I know why they put this on here they put this on here so that if it's like poking out you can easily kind of grab that and then just pull on that and pull that down but I still think it looks kind of poor and that's that's really all I have to say about that. Maybe change the piece to a different color or something. That's that's my suggestion for how they would fix that criticism right there. But then you can close this back up and then be on your way. And once again, opening back up this section of the ship right here will give you some access to the main interior of the ship. And this piece does not open up. It's just static in place by some pins. And one thing that I did not point out is that these are supposed to be kind of like guns right here. And the way that they look is that they they come out and they 
that, well, they don't really come out. They're just kind of there, just like this. They're on both sides. And I guess those are supposed to be the actual guns that the stud shooters represent, which, you know, I don't think it looks very good, but I'm fine with it being included on this set. And then just, once again, taking a look back in here, you have kind of these little little divots in there, or little drops that you can put your troops in. Um, the set only comes with two troops, which is kind of unfortunate, but you can you can kind of sit them down. There's not like a bracket or anything, so you'll be sitting them down on all studs. But you can sit your troops down in there, or you could lay them in there. Um, it will close with them sitting down or laying down, as you can see. Um, it just fits in there really nicely. So um, I think that works well. And however, though, I don't think that this is the most efficient way that they could have done this because you can really only fit like maybe. Maybe if we stretch it like maybe six troops, you could sit one in each of these. I mean, I guess if we're going to go like that, you could probably fit like ten troops if you tried to cram two in each of these and then just lay one down on this loading ramp. But, I mean, that's really all you have. And, I mean, I guess I guess you kind of have this open space right here, which you could probably seat another troop on. So you can maybe fit like eleven troops in here, which, you know, isn't bad, but I still just don't think that this space is very efficiently used. So that, that's kind of my, those are kind of my thoughts on that. Um, so, yeah, you can seat your troops down in there. Like so, um, I think that the backpack, though, is actually kind of preventing them from locking in, which I guess is kind of a good feature. Um, whether they intended it or not, I think that was a good design choice, I guess. Um, so that's really all there is for the middle section there. It's the same on both sides. And just to prove that it's the same, I will open it up. And there you go. And it's just the same thing just twice on both sides so that's that's really all there is about that um, and so now we will move back and before we move all the way back um, one thing I will point out is that something that I, you really don't see on Lego sets a lot these days is that there's actually an open pin right here oh, I don't think you guys can see it very well but there is a single open pin it is black and you guys can kinda see it it's right in front of this body piece right here like kind of in between here. If you guys know what I'm talking about, you you guys should be able to see it very well. That's something that you don't see on Lego sets very often for good reason, and that's just that it looks terrible. And even though it's kind of in a secluded place, you're not going to be able to see it very well. I still don't like this, and it is on both sides of the set. So, yeah, um, not a huge fan of that. Um, my suggestion for how they would fix that is put like a bushing or something on it or just use a smaller piece that doesn't have that extending off of it. So that's really all there is to talk about there. So now let's move on to the back of the ship, which looks very interesting. Um, I really do like this blue thruster engine right here, or whatever. And really the main feature of this is that you have these wings and that these are on clicking hinges or ratcheting joints, and they can just ratchet down like so, so that you can get the wings in this nice position right here. So. There you go, that's really all that there is back here. Um, there's a lot of open space right here. And you can see a bit of the hollow construction right through here as well. If we are to pry that up, you can see that it is a very hollow in here. Um, I don't actually know why they didn't decide to use this as like a storage compartment or something. Um, maybe because the door would be hard to make or something, but you could just make these things lift off or something. I mean, they have enough pieces where I think that they could totally have done something with this. Maybe just remove like that giant piece in the middle and then you could store some droids or something in there. You know, it, it's something that you could use, and if I do decide to modify this set, um, it's probably something that I will look into doing something with, but in the set stock form, um, this is entirely closed off, and there's not really much you can do with it. It's just a little open space that looks kind of hollow. If you know what to look for in the set, right here you can really see it, but that's pretty much all the features of this set. Um, it's not really a whole lot you can do besides that. Um, so, I mean, I guess, I guess that's kind of it. And we'll just fold these wings back up. Um, they don't go any more than straight up. And I think that the maximum they'll go is almost straight down, as you can see right there. But that's pretty much all the articulation you're going to get out of those. So, that is the entire set. Um, you do have these two figures off to the side being... Obi-Wan and R2-D2. They don't have a vehicle or anything, they just kind of stand off to the side, and that's pretty much it. So, now now we've talked about everything, we've talked about the figures, the vehicle, all the stuff, so 
Final thoughts and summary of the set go as far as it goes for this review. The instructions and the box I think are fine. The extra pieces, you know, they're cool and all. I like extra pieces, but nothing really too special out of that bunch. The building experience was quite enjoyable. I was expecting it to be a bit more tedious, but I did enjoy it quite a lot for this build. And as far as the figure selection is concerned, um, I feel like I feel like this set's really just missing something, and it's, it has some stuff that you don't really need. Um, I do like the Sand Troopers. I think they did a good job on the Sand Troopers. Whether I believe these are new additions with the newer helmet prints. So, very cool, and it's, it's actually interesting because we're getting, was at the time of this video, we haven't gotten it yet, but we will actually be getting a new Sand Trooper in 2019, so very interesting how they've decided to just do this now with the old Sand Trooper and the old Storm Trooper helmet. So, you know, I like that, but I'm, I'm sure that there would be people who would have liked to see the set pushed back so that they could get another two of those new Sand Troopers. Um, as far as the shuttle pilot goes, I mean, this figure is nothing special. I'm not going to pretend like it's special in any way, but it definitely does do what it needs to do in this set, and there's not much else to do with that figure or complain about. So that's really all I have to say about that. And as far as Obi-Wan and R2-D2 go, um, I like the Obi-Wan figure. I think it looks really nice, and I'm actually, I'm actually kind of happy with this figure a bit more than I was actually expecting to be, so... Good job, Lego, on this Obi-Wan figure. I think he looks cool. But as far as this R2-D2 figure goes, um, I don't know why we actually needed this in this set at all. Um, it, it really adds nothing besides adding a good guy character that can't really do anything in the set. So I don't know why they were why, what they were thinking or why they included R2-D2 in this set, but I just really don't <laughs> care about the R2-D2 figure in this set. I think I counted at one point, and we had, I think, somewhere around, like, three three or so. I might be getting the number wrong, but we had like three or so R2-D2s in this single wave of sets. We had the one from this set, we had the one from the X-Wing, which I did a review of probably a while ago when this is going up. And also there was one with the Anakin Shaddai Starfighter, which I also reviewed quite a long time ago. So, quite a few R2-D2s. Um, they were all the same figure, and I don't know what to do with this one, so I'm not a huge fan of it including R2-D2, but that's what they gave us. In place of R2-D2, I would have liked to see a Sand Trooper, you know, just another regular one, or maybe maybe even two regular ones. You know, you have a $90 price tag with, you know, maybe a 700 you know, with maybe a $70 price per part count. You could totally have thrown in another figure with this set Lego, but... You know, I think I think it's decent. Um, they definitely missed out on some opportunities with this R2-D2 and the lack of sand troopers because you don't even have enough sand troopers to fill this vehicle. But I think that overall they did decently well on the figures. Nothing to write home about, but still nothing too terrible. And lastly, um, this ship right here, um, as you can see, it is quite a big ship actually. But ninety dollars, I don't think this is worth ninety dollars. Don't get me wrong, it's a very cool ship. I, I do like how it looks overall. I just think that there are a few too many studs in some places like this cockpit area. Which, you know, is something that when I first saw, I was like, hey, it, it, it kind of looks unique. I think it'll be fine, but now that I have it in hand, it's like, uh, there's just a bit too much clutter up here. And I think that this does look a bit weird, too, with just the sides of this just being blank. But I do like the smoke gray color for that windshield, so very cool. But overall, um... I think it looks good. I think some of the features like the interior could be improved a bit to work a bit well. It's maybe the maybe as well as the landing gear, which I don't know how they would change with the space that they left for it. But you know, maybe if they left some more space in the new design for the interior, then they could make it retractable, which you know, that'd be neat as well. I'd love to see some retractable landing gear on this thing, but not something that would be easily done with the way it's currently built. And kind of my last criticism of this set at least the build portion of it is that they're just like random colors kind of showing everywhere as well as those two pins that I pointed out on the sides that are just left open which I don't really like at all but other than that I think this set looks very good so overall um, this is a $90 set in the United States with 636 pieces um, a few of those are large pieces so I'll be generous and bump it up to a $70 set and you know, for a seventy dollars set, um, I think that this would be fine. I think that this would be an acceptable set. I, you know, I'd love to see a sixty dollar, this set for sixty dollars, but seventy dollars I think would have been the best price point for this. But ninety dollars is just way too much money. Don't get me wrong, this is a pretty cool set, but I would not pay ninety dollars for this. Wait for it to go on sale is my advice if you really want to pick one of these up because ninety dollars, six hundred thirty-six pieces, five minifigures. 
just doesn't add up very well in my mind. So um, overall, though, I do like this set. I think it's a pretty cool set for what it does. And that's really all I have to say about that. So that's going to conclude my review of the 75221 Imperial Landing Craft. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this set down in the comments section below. Let me know what you think of my misprinted Sand Trooper, which I hold very, I think will be a very special figure in my collection. He is definitely a unique Sand Trooper, as you can see right there, um, if he doesn't fall over. But, you know, whatever. Let me know what you think of this set down in the comments section below. Um, once again, thanks everyone for watching this video. And I'll see you guys in the next video, whatever that may be that you watch. I mean, I won't see you, but, you know, whatever. You get the idea. Thank you guys all so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.